How are we doing, crew? I'm coming at you today because I I shared a video yesterday from that uh, that OCR World Championships had posted on, on Facebook, and I I said you know after I shared that uh, I was going to bring you some more information why I thought what I was saying is is a great idea, and and basically they announced a video saying that um, you know about the short course the 1.8 mile or 3K short course, and um, I said it was a great idea because I, I believe that it's a, it's a fantastic move for our sport. Um, if you look at track and field or swimming or other sports, what you see is you have many different distances. By the way, let me back up. I'm sitting in this position because I, it's something I try to do every day for about five to 10 minutes. Just sit in a nice, deep squat. Um, in some cultures, they sit, they sit like this all the time. They have fantastic hip mobility. Always working on my athletes to improve their hip mobility. So, thought I would just show you a little fitness tip as I shoot my video today. So, so spend some time in a deep squat. Um, but anyway, getting back to the video share. Uh, if you take track and field or swimming, I'll use those two. You've got short distance athletes, mid distance athletes, long distance athletes in both those sports. And you see a wide variety of, of genetic packages. And in those sports, the best in the world congregate at a meet and they compete against each other in certain distances. In the sport of OCR up to this point, we have a lot of, of good athletes, in some cases great athletes, but there's not a huge pool of great athletes. So what you see happening is somebody uh, some of our top athletes can do really good in a 15-mile race and do really good in a short-distance race. But as more and more talent comes to our sport and, and the talent pool continues to grow, uh, what you're going to see happening is somebody that is a true endurance athlete. Let's say somebody that uh, from the Olympics, you know, a top 10 and the world Olympian in the 10,000 meter of the marathon transfers over to, to OCR, that athlete is not going to be able to go up against the best in a 3K course or 1.8 mile course when the top 10 athletes in the world from say the 400 meter to the 3000 meter, those athletes come over and they're competing in, in the 1.8 mile or 3K, that 10K marathon group is not gonna be able to compete with those track athletes are those explosive, powerful athletes that are coming in and going to that, oh, I like that short course, I'm gonna go to that short course. And that's all perfectly normal. That's exactly what happens in track and field and swimming and other, other distances. I promise you Michael Phelps could go swim a great two mile. He could, but he's not going to be able to compete with the best two, three mile swimmers in the world. Uh, Michael Phelps is not going to win gold in the 1500 meter swim. Just like Jeremy Warner or LaShawn Merritt are not going to go, or Nick Simmons are not going to be able to compete against the best 10,000 meter runners in the world. Every one of those athletes, because they do a lot of running, could go out and run a pretty decent 10K or marathon. Um, they're good athletes. So, anyway, as, as the talent pool grows, I love the fact that we're specializing in distance. I love that there's an option, you know, and in a distance as short as 1.8 miles, 3K is, is, is even compounded more when you add the obstacles in. It starts to cater more and more to those athletes that are, you know, the mid distance and under, uh, you know, in track and field. Um, I think it's arguably that even down as a 100 meter, 200 meter runner, 400 meter runner, you know, competing against somebody and say the 3k steeplechase I feel because of the, the obstacles that you could see that that window of athletes competing against each other and doing very well in a short distance course they're not going to be able to step up to the 10 15 mile races and compete with the best in the world it's not going to happen um, and you see that in track and field and swimming the two of that I uh, examples that I used um, let me go let me look at track and field again so every distance yeah, there's two basic energy cycles, aerobic and anaerobic. You look at the 5,000 meter, it's about 95% aerobic, 5% anaerobic. 
you go all the way down to the 100 meters, that's exactly swapped. 5% aerobic, 95% anaerobic. Uh, 400 meters, you're looking at 30, 70, 30% uh, aerobic, 70% anaerobic. You go to the 1500 meters, that's swapped. Um, 70% aerobic, 30% anaerobic. That's, that's just basic science when you look at the energy cycles. And that's how athletes find their, their event. You know, in middle school, high school, they're like, that's just what I'm good at. I'm on the podium in this event. You stick me in the two mile, I'm not going to be on the podium. It just starts to happen. Um, I'm a master's track athlete. You know, every single OCR athlete could grade themselves on what distance they're best at currently compared to current world record marks. When I run master's track and field, you know, if I time trialed myself in every distance, every common distance in track and field, there's going to be a couple distances. For me, it's middle distance, 800 meters and 1500 meters. Um, I can step down to the 400 meters, but the 8 and the 15 are the ones where if I did a time trial right now, I'm not going to be anywhere near the world record, but my number is going to fall in that range. Um, if I ran a marathon, I'm going to be much further away, statistically speaking, percentage-wise, than the marathon world record. Um, and that holds true even if I trained for the marathon or if I trained for the 100 meters. Um, you know, Usain Bolt, in 20 years, if he stays in shape, is always going to be closer to the world record marks as a master athlete in the 100, 200 range, maybe 400 meter range as it gets older. But he is never going to be up there in that marathon range of, of a top master's athlete compared to the world records. It's just basic science. It's the way genetic packaging works for us. So I think it's really cool that um, athletes like Hunter, Rose, athletes that can step into longer races, we've seen them do really well in longer races, you know, top five, top 10, uh, even better sometimes in the real long distance races. A part of that is because um, the talent pool is not crazy big. Just like uh, the athletes that typically do, you know, you can look at a John Albin or, or those type of athletes. Uh, John Albin could step into the 3K, 1.8 mile, um, this year at OCR World Championships and probably do pretty darn well. Um, but genetically speaking, the more powerful, faster athletes um, that fall into that uh, sprint and mid-distance category, your, your Kate Kramers, for example, you know, they're going to lean towards doing better in that 1.8 mile versus 10 mile. It's just the way it works. So I, I love the fact, I had a talk with Nick Simmons, and, you know, his eyes light up when, when I say, hey, OCR World Championships this year is going to have a 1.8 mile distance. And all of a sudden, he realizes, as other athletes that, that are good at the distance that he's at, a world-class 800 meter runner, that, oh, wow, that's, that's in my, that could be in my wheelhouse if I spent six months becoming my obstacle proficient, where the athletes that just ran the USA Olympic trials and the marathoner and the marathon, those top 10 athletes, male and females, look at the 10 to 15 mile range or the ultra beast range um, or even the 24 hour races as, wow, that's in my wheelhouse. You're not gonna, you can't completely unwrap that package. You can take either ends of the spectrum and put them through a training cycle and get them a lot better at the distance that falls outside of their genetic package. But, you know, as, as far as hundreds of athletes coming in from many sports, you know, specialization is going to be very important. So I'm a firm believer that um, our, our current pro team athletes, if it's Spartan or Battlefly, whatever, I think it's very important to specialize. If you really want to be relevant as more people come in, you know, if you specialize for a certain distance, you're doing what athletes in other sports do. And the fact that our sport allows two distances now is great. So as you specialize, you're going to get better and better at certain distances. And that doesn't mean you can't step in and run longer races or shorter races. Athletes in track and field and swimming, the two examples I gave, they do that all the time in the off season and stuff. But when it comes down to nitty gritty and your big A races, if you specialize, then you're going to have a greater chance of competing against the best in the world. So, 
you know, I could talk, I'm very passionate about this subject. Uh, long story short, I, I hope Spartan and Battlefrog and, and others do that. Spartan did it in 2014. They kind of did a trial run at the 2014 World Championships. They had a short course, and it was it was amazing to watch, number one. Everybody was flying, and I don't think it's any, uh, it wasn't um, by luck that Hunter and Cassidy won on the men, on, Hunter won for the guys and Cassidy won for the girls. And um, your your second and third place were Bracken and Isaiah. And I can't remember on the on the female side, but, you know, minus the spear throw, which things can happen, you make that or you miss that, um, y you know, on a strict short distance course with, with basic tough obstacles, you know, you're going to see bigger bodied, faster, powerful athletes, you know, versus the longer distances. I think OCR will always be about running, being a be very, very important. It's just what kind of runner are you? Are you a short to middle distance runner? Or are you a long distance runner? You know, the 5K athletes are kind of tweeners, you know, maybe even 1500, you step down to the 15 to 3000, um, a little bit of a tweener there. And, and that's why I think it would be really cool if your OCR World Championships and others that hopefully bring these short distances in, you know, right now in our sport, you don't want to split your elite field. Let's say at OCR World Championships this year, there's 20 really good elite athletes that show up. I'm just throwing something out there. And 10 of them do short, 10 of them do long. Well, as a director, you would want to see all 20 in that long race or that short race. So you, you incentivize that and you create kind of the hybrid winner. You know, let's say you win the short course and you get eighth in the long course. So that's a score of nine. Or you get seven in the uh, short course and first in the long course. That's a score of eight. So, and you could have a cool tiebreaker if somebody happened to have two, three, two or three people had eight points. But incentivize people to race both days. So we create that. You get the podium for the short, you get the podium for the long, and you got the podium for the hybrid. Um, but it's really cool to be in the first five, six years of the sport and see how we're growing. I said, I think it's one of the greatest moves that, that I've seen anybody make in our sport because I truly believe that we have a lot of excited athletes that have been racing a lot of long distance races that it's, and they've been doing pretty good. It's just not in their genetic wheelhouse when a ton of talent pool rolls in. So they're extremely excited just as if we would have really been focused on shorter distance races up to this point, And all of a sudden we added a long distance race. We would have just as many people excited that now they have, you know, they came from a marathon world or an ultra world. Now they're super excited. It would be the same feel. Um, and they, they were smart. They made the distance short enough that we have a, a big gap. You know, 1.8 miles with 15 to 20 tough obstacles. That's going to be knock down, drag out. I mean, when, when you're done with that race, you're on your back dying, gasping for air. Um so anyway, you can tell this is something that I'm extremely passionate about. I could talk about it forever. But um, if you guys ever have any questions or about anything that I talked about, shoot me a private message. And uh, I'm going to shoot this video to, to Margaret. Margaret, I appreciate you uh, throwing it out there and, and, and the Mud Run Guide. Um, I just finished some of my, uh, my sand bell bent rows, one of my favorite exercises. So my forearms are, are burning right now. And I'm just about to the point where uh, my legs are burning. I'm done with my my squat. So work the squats in, you become more mobile in your hips and you'll find it improving. Uh, you'll find yourself improving uh, your mobility and just uh, improving in many different ways with, with your workouts because good hip mobility and ankle mobility is fantastic.